What's up, New Life family? How are you this evening? Super excited to get into the Word. So listen, open your Bibles, open up your Bible app, open up your dusty Bible, your clean Bible, whatever Bible you got in the house, open it up to this, to this verse. Um, we're going to go to James chapter 2, verse 14. We're going to start there. James chapter 2, verse 14. And if this is your first time joining us, my name is Pastor Lincoln. I'm the worship pastor here as well as the creative pastor and other slash of things. But I get to serve underneath this amazing leaders, uh, Pastor Dave and Liz Allman. In their absence, I just want to give them honor today. So listen, if you got that scripture, James chapter 2, verse 14, and something just we, we do here at YSU, if you could stand for the reading of the word, because we stand for everything else, you might as well stand for reading the word of God. And the word of God says, according to James, verse 14, chapter 2, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Father God, thank you so much for what you're going to do tonight and how you're going to live through us and speak through us tonight, God. God, open up our ears and open up our hearts tonight to hear your word, thus saith the Lord, in Jesus' precious name. And we all say amen and amen. You can be seated. Or just stand up and sit back down real quick, if you were seated already. <clears throat> so listen, tonight I want to be coming from um, a topic called faith and work. Faith and work. And I know a lot of people are like, faith and work? Yeah, because you got to have both of them. You got to have both of them. So we find ourselves looking at the scripture, when I was reading this this week, it really um, retold what I need to do with the faith that I already have, but also the faith that I'm striving for. If I'm striving for more faith, I got to do what? I got to do more work. And more work can honestly make us seem or feel like, but I'm doing all that I can right now in the middle of a pandemic. I'm, I'm going to church. I'm getting baptized. I'm going outside of my comfort zone. I'm trying to stay safe. I'm trying to find the right person. But the fact of the matter is, if you want more faith, you got to do more work. You got to do more work. You got to have a better Bible, a Bible study life. You have to have a better prayer life. You have to seek more and do more in order to have more. I never forget when I was trying to, to grow my faith. I was like, Lord, how exactly am I supposed to grow my faith? And this crazy um, preacher that I, that I had the honor of finding out about, he started preaching this series called Crazy Faith. And I was like, what does crazy faith look like? And some of y'all know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Pastor Michael Todd, the lead pastor of Transformation Church, my twin. He just don't know it yet. But anyways, the fact of the matter is that this man was showing what crazy faith looked like, and how he was doing it was showing his work ethic. He believed in something so much that it was, one, sent from God, but two, that it could actually happen. He started putting in the groundwork in order to see it come to pass. Before that thing actually came to pass, that was five years. That was five years that passed. And he, was, he said, I, we're going to be a multicultural, multi-generational, multi-ethnic church. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. He had to believe it while standing in a room that was no bigger than what he was looking at. He had to dream. He said, I want to buy, we're going to buy as a church, we're going to buy that center, uh, a, a, church, a building that was as big as what would be our Cavelli Center, for those who are watching. He was going to buy an arena while he was preaching in a room smaller than this. He was believing and putting, putting work to his faith because he knew the concept of if I don't work it, it's not going to come to pass. A lot of us have gotten in this position of having the faith but not working the faith. Having the faith 
but not working the faith. I want to bring our attention to this scripture. I just want you to listen to it. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And it's often that we try to, we gain our faith by only what we see. I have faith by what I see being done, what I see that's in front of me. It's hard to have faith about things that are too big in the moment, too, too grand in the scheme. I don't have faith in it because I can't see it. I can't touch it. I can't look at it. But the Bible is telling me that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because the crazy part is, we already serve someone who we can't see. But we have a problem with trusting something that we can't see. We have a problem with, with walking by faith and not by sight, even though we serve someone who we cannot see. The concept of faith is hard for us to grasp because we can't see faith. We have to believe it. We have to trust it. And that is asking us to, in turn, trust the God who gives us faith. It's easy for us to trust God, this significantly larger being, but it's hard for us to trust the concept of faith because faith requires work. How many of us, let's keep it hundred. how many of us is lazy? Some, like, we have a lazy, yeah, I see some people. Yeah, we're lazy. We, we really are lazy when it comes to certain things. Now let's talk about that. What are we not lazy about? What are we not lazy about? Eating. I heard somebody say eating. I'm not lazy about eating. If I'm hungry, brother man go eat. And I know everybody like, you so skinny. Trust me, y'all. That's because I've been wearing a, uh, uh, what they call that thing? A slim, a waist trainer. I got me a waist trainer. Because Pastor Lori knows on Wednesdays, it's no waistband Wednesdays. We wear sweatpants. Well, no, I'm joking. But listen, <clears throat> we're not lazy about certain things, but we are lazy about the things that require work. It don't take work to eat. But it do take work to be on a diet. It do take work to watch what you eat. It does take work to go to the gym. Man, does it take work to go to the gym. The gym is hard. <laughs> the gym is hard. That life, that, li that life, hear me when I say this, that lifestyle is a life of sacrifice. And how crazy it, that it pertains to the life of being a Christian, the life of sacrifice. So working out, I connect with working out in a certain way because it's one, it's building my body and building my overall health. And I have to treat my faith the same way because I have to work my faith in order for it to grow. And if I don't work it, it will stay as small as the mustard seed that I had to use it as. My faith started out as a mustard seed, but it shouldn't stay as a mustard seed. It should grow into this beautiful thing. It should grow into more. But some of us have stopped believing because circumstances have come. The Bible never said we wouldn't have circumstances. The Bible never, God never said that we wouldn't have any trouble. God never said that we wouldn't ever question his motives. God said that if you just have the faith of a mustard seed, if you have a little bit of faith, you can tell that mountain to move and jump and jump in the sea. But if you don't even have the faith to do the small things, how can you have the faith to do the big things? Am I making sense? Because it's going to take work in order to watch what you have faith about come into fruition. When I was trying to figure out how I could do this task of continuing doing New Life YSU, what you're in right now, I had to have faith in continuing doing it. Because we had a lot of momentum when we were at YSU. We had a lot of things going on. We had a lot of great breakthroughs. We had a lot of great chains breaking, but I had to figure out a way to still break chains through a camera lens. And that takes faith every day. It takes faith writing a word when only four people may be in the room. It takes faith to walk into a room and yell at a camera and be hyping and connect with somebody who's looking at me through a screen and a lens or somebody who's listening to me through podcasts. It takes faith to believe that the word that God gave me can penetrate someone's heart even if they're not in the same room as me. It takes faith. And I have to be real, some days my faith is not as strong as my voice may be portraying in this moment. 
Because there's some days that I'm preaching something that I, in return, don't believe. I don't believe. There's some days that this preacher just don't got faith. There's some days that this preacher just don't have the energy to believe that God can actually do what he promised me because right now I'm walking by sight and not by faith. How many of us have been walking by sight and not by faith? Because it's easy to believe in what you see. It's easy to believe that Oh, I can never have that because it's nowhere near me. It's years off. I can never be young and, and, and saved. I can never be young and, and I can never help my family learn more about Jesus. I can never do that because one, I haven't seen it. And two, God is asking me to do it and I don't even believe I can do it. I don't believe I'm the person to break the generational curse off my family, but God told me that I could do it. But I don't see it. I don't see it. And it's often in the moments what we don't see, God sees inside of us. But also, the best thing about God is he always sends someone like me to send to you to say, hey, you can do it. You, you have, all, all you have is all you need. You don't need these extracurricular things. You don't need all of this uh, complex stuff. All you have is all you need. But we believe that we need so much more because we need to see the thing in order to believe it. But God is asking us in the word, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's how we get distracted by seeing. We get distracted by seeing. We don't get distracted by believing. (laughs) It's always by seeing that we get off of the right road. It's always by seeing that we veer away from what looks like it may become complicated. I'll give you a key example. When we're in traffic or you draw or you just got out of traffic and you see that there's more traffic ahead, you might turn down the side road because I'm not dealing with that. I just got out of that. I just got out of a detour. I don't want to go down another detour. But maybe that detour is the one that God's telling you to go down. Maybe that's the one that's leading you to the thing that you had faith in back in 2005, and now he's trying to lead you in 2020 to get to that thing. But you keep going on your own detour instead of the detour that God has set for you. God put the cones out there so you could stay in the lane, but you're saying, no, I don't want to go through all that. So instead, here we are, stuck in traffic, believing dreams that will never come to pass because we have no work ethic. I was talking to someone this week, and I was talking about how dreams remain dreams if you only think about them. Dreams have to become goals, and goals are hard to create because goals have these things called deadlines. Goals have deadlines. Goals are no longer dreams. Dreams stay dreams when you're just daydreaming and thinking about them. But when you put a goal, when you make that thing a goal, when you make it a goal to get baptized, when you make it a goal to start going to church more, when you make it a goal to start reading your word more, those things have deadlines. You got to set a date to stuff. You got to set a time to stuff. If I'm trying to get better with my faith and the word of God said or said in the scriptures and I, and I can't think of the scripture right now but we 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 get <laughs> faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so the the answer to increasing my faith is the word of god reading it out loud putting it in my earbuds while i'm driving it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god but I don't even want to open it because it looks intimidating. It's thick. Some of the novels we read is thicker than this. Some of the self-help books we read is bigger than this. Some of the textbooks that we got to get for school are bigger than this, but yet this is the one that we're afraid of. We're not afraid to read about psychology. You're not afraid to read about physics. We're not afraid to read about the human body, but we are so scared to read of how we can live a better story. This book is intimidating. It's got a bunch of pages. 
And if you got a Bible like mine, it's got a bunch of highlighted areas, sticker notes, dusty parts, folded up parts, because this book is a part of my lifestyle. It's a part of my lifestyle. Just like this phone, unfortunately, is a part of my lifestyle, it's dusty too. This brown part, if y'all can see it, that used to be light brown, but that's dirt. <laughs> because it's a part of my lifestyle. I touch it, I use it, I put it up to my ear, I put it in my pocket. It travels with me. How come this can't? How come this don't have any wear and tear on it? Because I'm not willing, man, I'm not willing to read about myself because I may find out something that I did not know about myself. I may find out that I have a bunch of faith, but no deeds. I may find out that I have all this faith, all this belief, all these dreams, but I don't have any work ethic to push those dreams forward. And that's a hard reality to find out that you might be lazy. <laughs> it's, a hard it's a hard reality that you might find out that you are spiritually lazy. That's hard. Because nobody ever wants to be called lazy. Nobody ever wants to be called unclean, unclean. But yet they called this man in the Bible unclean, unclean. Nobody wants to be called lazy, lazy. Fearful, fearful. Anxiety, anxiety, depression. We don't want to be called those things, but if you are those things, that's who you is. But the better thing to know is the fact that you can be called a new name if you just open up the book. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can't find myself in any other book more than I should be able to find myself in this book. I connect with so many people in this book. I connect with, I connect with David. I connect with the fact that David was called to come out and fight somebody else's army. You know how I can connect with that? Every Sunday, I'm called to fight other people's battles because they aren't willing to yet. But every Sunday morning, I come up here and declare things and help them know that they can do the same thing. I'm, you don't need a stage to start worshiping. You don't need a microphone to start proclaiming the gospels of Jesus Christ. All you need is the faith that you can do it. That's all you need. That's all you need. All you need is the faith and the work. The faith is, I believe it's going to come to pass. The work is, I'm going to raise my hands and call it into the atmosphere. I'm going to say that my family is healed, that I will get the job. I will have the saved spouse. I will have all of those things. I got the faith. Now I got to put the work in. I got to put the work in. Because faith without a, not accompanied by work is what? Dead. I don't want it to be called when I die and go to heaven. You have some dead faith. Yeah, you was a good servant, but I have faith part, brother. I don't want that to be said about me. I don't want my ancestors who have died and went on to glory to say, man, I wish, I wish he would have more faith. I wish if he knew the person that God made him to be, he would have more faith, but he don't even believe what he's in right now. He don't even believe in himself. She don't even believe in herself. We have family members looking down on us saying, if you would just believe, you could have. If you would just work, you could have. I don't want my grandfather, grandmother, especially my grandmother that I never met, Ruby, I don't want her to be saying to me, if my baby would just believe and work, he could have it, but he's so fearful of the work that he don't want to believe. I got crazy faith. 
I got crazy dreams in my head that I always think about. I'm like, man, what would happen if, if New Life YSU turned into like, we got a building and we were able to go downtown instead of waiting to get a room at YSU and going through the proper uh, channels, we could just open up the, have the keys, open up the building and go in. Everybody just walk down from campus and worship at the building. If I don't believe it though, and I don't start putting the work in, being faithful in that baby room, being faithful in the next room and the next room after that, I will never know what it feels like to have keys to my own building. It starts up here, but then it has to materialize out here. I got to start putting the work in. I got to start calling. I got to start making things. I have to start getting connections with people downtown. I have to start doing this, and I have to start doing that. I can't just think it. I have to do it. My faith is huge. I got Hulk faith, but I got childlike work. And that does not, that doesn't come together. I can scream all I want on this stage, but if I get off this platform and scared of every type of thing, not thinking that anything can come to pass, not thinking that I can be able to do, the, that my worship team can do amazing things outside of this house with our music, if I don't believe those things and put the work in, they will never come to pass. Y'all, I, I know I brag about my worship team all the time. I, and this may be cliche. I really think my worship team is the best one. Shout out to New Life Worship. Y'all are beasts. And I hope some of y'all is listening. Because you had enough faith in me, somebody who don't even look like you, not even in the same age range, somebody who didn't even go to this church originally. I was playing drums. Y'all believed enough in me and had faith enough in me that we could work to get to the point where we are now. Now we're working on various things. Every Sunday morning, we get to battle it out together. Not against each other, but against the enemy. We get to battle it out every Sunday morning. We get to pull people out of a pit every Sunday morning. That took faith to believe in. We used to think that we were just singers on a stage. We just gonna come here, we're going to sing our three songs, and we're going to get out the way. And sadly, that's how a lot of worship teams operate. They got all the faith in the world. They'll practice. We'll do this. But when it comes to delivering and working the faith that you had in practice and delivering when it's time to sing, it don't match up. And then you get what I call lazy worship. Or you get what I call unauthentic, inauthentic, inauthentic, unauthentic, one of them two. Y'all look it up. Katie, if you're watching, check my, check my stuff. <laughs> unauthentic worship. It's not real. It doesn't come from a real place. My biggest thing is I never preach or sing stuff that I ain't went through. I'm not going to sing what a beautiful name if I don't believe Jesus' name is beautiful. I'm not going to preach about faith and work if I'm not the leading person to show you that faith actually does work if you put work into it. I, I can't preach about it. I can't do it. I can't be seen as a Pharisee and a hypocrite. I, I, I don't have the time for that, nor do I have the want for that. I have to put my money where my mouth is, is an old saying. I got to put my faith where my heart and my head is. I got to combine together and I got to start working that faith because faith without works is what? Dead. Don't let it be said about your faith that it's dead. It's phony. It's fake. You got fake faith. Fugazi, Pastor Mike said. I wanted, I wanted to, to talk about this, and it's not really even a faith series, it's just a few sermons about faith. I wanted to talk about this because this is the perfect time to talk about faith, because a lot of people ain't got it. Look at our world right now. We got to wear masks, it's mandated, and yes, I have my mask on after I leave here, but it ain't, it ain't even 10 of us in here, so we safe, and we all far apart, we all far apart. So the fact of the matter is that our world looks different. Ministry is different. Sports, politics, all this, it's all different. Gatherings are different now. Now, I know some of us are sick of getting on Zoom, but you're going to have to get comfortable with Zoom again right now. 
<laughs> Our world is different. And because it's different, it calls for a different level of faith. It's hard to see light. It's hard to see anything when it's dark outside. But you know the most beautiful thing about darkness? You can see the stars clearly. When it's dark outside, when it's not um, contaminated by outside light, you can look up and see the stars clearly. Maybe that's what God is trying to do for us right now. He's trying to give us, he's, he's trying to, to, to allow the darkness and take out the, the fake illumination of light and allow us to see the beautiful stars, to see him, to see that he's still there. Every time I get to look up in the sky and see the stars and it's dark outside, I'm like, man, God is still in control. I know it's dark out here. I know I don't feel safe in the dark because nobody feels safe in the dark. Some of us talk to ourselves in the dark. I, I announce myself before I walk into a dark room. I'm in here. So if you in here, we both in here. I talk to myself. When I was younger, I'm not even joking. I used to, when I used to take the trash out, because at my parents' house, the, the, the house is, is it's on a cul-de-sac, and there's trees going down our driveway, and it's dark. And I'm a brother, so I get nervous <laughs> when I take the trash out. So when I take the trash out, I used to sing, <laughs> don't judge me. D don't judge me, y'all. <laughs> You listen on podcast, you driving, waiting for this line to come up. Don't judge me after I say this. I used to start singing Thriller by Michael Jackson. <laughs> I used to start singing Thriller. Because in that video of Thriller, Michael wasn't, he could have been scared, but he started dancing with what he was scared with. Ooh, that'll preach. <laughs> I wonder if I started interacting and, and, and making something that was scary into something fun. If I start dancing with anxiety, anxiety is now my, my friend and not my enemy. If I started dancing with depression and, and making it seem like it wasn't what it actually was, I wonder what I could actually defeat. Because Michael was so confident in who he was, everything else around him that was scaring him at one time was now following him. In movements, they were watching him. They were watching Mike, and Michael was a bad dude. I'm nowhere near Mike, but when I was scared, I remember, I said, just be Michael Jackson. Just be Michael Jackson. It's dark out here. I heard a dog bark. I said, it's close to me tonight. All that stuff. I break out the lyrics. <laughs> ah! I remember one time, I got so scared because <laughs> something was moving, and I knew it wasn't a human. It was either a raccoon or something crazy. I just took the trash out. Now, I usually take off running, but this time I was like, you know what? We're just going to walk. We're going to get over this fear. And as I started walking more, it sounded like the rustling started getting louder. So I started saying, it's close to me tonight. It's something evil's lurking in the doo 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 And then I heard it get closer. I said, I know it's Thriller. I started going off. So when you scare next time, just start singing Thriller. Pastor Lincoln told you, start singing Thriller. But what an amazing illustration that what was scaring Michael at one point in time was now following him. Anxiety used to scare me. Big dreams used to scare me. But now I'm confident in the person who gave me the dream, gave me the faith, and made me do the work. Now that dream is following me. Now it's dancing with me. Now it's moving with me. If I move right, the dream move right. If I move left, the, the dream move left. If I step back, kiss myself, it does the same thing. Because now I have the faith that will work for me. If you got faith, in something, work that thing. Work it. You want a degree? Start working. You want two degrees? Start working. You want three? God bless you, but start working. You want a good husband? Start working. Start working. And, and working, I mean work on yourself. You don't want to attract, because you attract who you are, you don't want to attract somebody in your current state if your current state is not healthy. It'll be two unhealthy people together. 
You don't want to marry into something that is unhealthy. You want to marry into something that is healthy. That's why I express all the time that you and the other person should have a relationship with God. Because you can always come back to the headquarters. When you're in an argument, you can always come back to the main thing. You ever hear about keeping the main thing the main thing? If you keep the main thing the main thing, you can always come back to it. Say, I know I'm fussing with her and she's fussing with me, but let's pray about it. Maybe we should pray together. Because I have faith in this marriage, but I got to work. I got to work it. I got faith in this job. I got faith in the fact that I can get the, the degree, but if I don't do the work, I'm not going to get to see it. I believe that my significant other is out there, but if I don't work on me, how am I going to expect for them to be working on them before we even meet? You got to have faith. But better yet, you got to work it. You got to work that faith. Working faith can even mean disregarding other people's opinions. That's one thing I had to learn the hard way. You got to disregard other people's opinions. Because other people's opinions can sometimes determine your faith. I say to people, yeah, I see why is you worshiping in the chestnut room or worshiping in Beagley Center for a worship night and people look at me like I'm crazy. But I'm dead serious. <laughs> That's how potent my faith is. But if I don't work it, and if I allow their opinions to speak to me, and usually opinions come from a place because from where they wish they could do what you're trying to do. That ain't jealousy. That's just like, I just, I wish I was, and it's coming out in a nasty way. What makes you think you can get a degree? Because I'm taking classes? <laughs> you can too. What makes you think that you can find a mate that loves God? Ain't, barely anybody out here loves God. Well, I love him. <laughs> I think somebody else loved him that I think would be cute. <laughs> Don't let other people's insecurities about their own faith ruin yours. Listen to me. And I'm closing here. There is something significant that wants to happen in your life. But your work is waiting on you. You got the faith. You got the drive, but you won't even get in the car. Get in the car. Drive. Work that faith. Your work is waiting on you. Don't just believe in something. Don't believe that your family will stay healthy through this pandemic. Work that thing. Start praying over your family members that live in your house. Start anointing them with anointing oil. Start believing and working. Put your faith and your work together. Because faith without works is dead. Cadaver. No pulse. There's nothing worse than dead faith. There's nothing worse than it. So you have the opportunity to start working your faith. What does working your faith look like? Opening up your Bible. Listening to sermons. Listening to preachers who are way better than I am. Listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes. Listening to Michael, Pastor Michael Todd. Listening to Pastor Stephen Furtick. Listening to pa uh, Bishop Bonner. Listening to uh, Joe Olstein. Listening to, to a, a, a wide variety of preachers. Listening to Pastor Dave Allman, the beast of them all. Listening to people who are way more wise than I am. I appreciate you listening to me, but there is wisdom out there that can help work your faith. Don't be afraid to go listen to it because they might be talking about you. Those are the best sermons. Those are the best words that you can ever receive. When, some, when the preacher is talking about you, and you're like, dang, that's me. That's the best sermons because they convict you, but they push you. 
They push you to be a better person. I hope tonight that this word is pushing you to be a better Christian, a better faith believer, a better worker. Because you can have it. It's in your hand. Your work is just waiting on you. I want to pray with you tonight. Can you bow your head? Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you that our faith doesn't just have to stay in mustard seed form, but it can grow, God. So God, we're asking you, God, help us eradicate our laziness, our spiritual laziness. Set a fire in us that we can start to dream again, set goals again, and push towards the mark. Push towards those goals. Start working our faith. Start working what we put on, on paper. Start working what we put in our phone notes. Start working what we saw 12 years ago, four years ago, three minutes ago, and start working it again, God. God, we're asking for our faith to be renewed. Set a fire in our souls that no opinion no jealousy, no envy can put out. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in us and through us to help not only ourselves but others to live a better story. God, we love you and we appreciate you. And we give your name the honor, glory, and all the praise. And all of his people said amen and amen. Hey, family, hope you enjoyed the sermon. Listen. Be sure to click subscribe to be able to see all of our content and keep up with all of our things that we're going to be posting throughout the year. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at New Life YSU and be sure to follow us on our website, newlifepoland.com. I hope this sermon blessed you and we hope that you have a great rest of your day. See you soon.